the black sheep. Man, look, here's the deal. What's up, dude? Kind of been depressed today. What is depression like for me? I don't feel like doing shit. Nothing's really inspiring to me. Probably, uh, probably need medication. Um, and that's just kind of how I felt today. I played hooky at work. And I slept. It's kind of how I felt today. You know, and I'm, I'm not that, I'm not that down. It's not like I'm sad, depressed, not like I'm debilitating that much, but I just felt like rather not fucking doing it today at the day job. And I'm going to pack this bowl. This is the first bowl I smoked all day. I dealt with my roommate. He's kind of a dick. You know, it's like, fuck, a day job. Okay, again, 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 again. Wait, wait, let's, let's, get, let's get off work and go home and go to sleep. And then as soon as we fucking wake up again, let's go do that shit some more. The thing that we uh, did not intend on devoting our life to. That's kind of what happened. And I felt like doing Brother Dank here and there today, but then I didn't even feel like doing Brother Dank. You know, I was like, ugh, let me just sleep. So that's what happened there. That is what occurred. Gotta eat. I didn't eat yet. You don't have to eat. That's a myth, bruh. What you eating? Food is good for the soul. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I need some good, dude, I do, I need some fucking pork chops, and fucking baked beans, and potato salad, huh, I would eat a pork chop, yeah, I would eat a pork chop, this Jew would eat a pork chop, I'm not a Jew, but you gonna eat like that, bruh, I know y'all got great, great dining choices in your town, Honestly, they're okay. There's a lot of them that's not all they cracked up to be. You look tired as fuck, dude. I'm just kind of waking up. What's up, Wugs? You guys, Wugs is here. Okay. Let me, like, get let me like get my shit better. Let me get my shit better, okay? Here's the deal. Wugs is here. Black Sheep is here. We've got a strong crew. A strong crew. Wugs is fighting his followers. He knows how to periscope. He's retweeting it on Twitter. Susanna McFarlane is here as well. You guys, we're going to shout out to each one. Susanna's here. She's back, rather. You play guitar? I didn't know that. Susanna, you, you play guitar on Facebook all day and I never saw it? I'm going to follow you so hard, sister. I'm going to follow you so hard. And you know what else? Oh, nice heart work. They're all for the healing of the nations and the end of every curse. All the hearts here, since this thing started, all million and a half of them are for the healing of the nations and the end of every curse. What does that mean? That means that uh, the healing of the nations and the end of every curse in the world is a doable thing. We're doing it right here. It's science-based. Now, do you know any other ministry who's bringing out the healing of the nations, the end of every curse, proclaiming Jesus as weed, and erecting canopies across every neighborhood? Do you know anyone else who's doing it quite like this? Do you know anyone else who's of such great import to the fate and destiny of humanity? Do you know anyone else? Farrakhan's all right. Farrakhan's all right. But look, I would say donate to Farrakhan if you think he's that great. And donate to your boy at paypal.me backslash brother dank. You know, that is, going to, that is going to do it for everyone. Your gift, your love gift today is going to bring out. And you see, Black Sheep donates. Black Sheep's like a regular donator to this ministry. Like he's in the church. No question. Okay. The rest of you guys, y'all hang out sometime. Where's that tithe? Where's that tithe? PayPal.me backslash Brother Dink. No dots, no dashes, no underscores, spaces, or special characters. It's just PayPal.me backslash Brother Dink. You can drop in any donation. Also, what I forget to mention, and I owe my boy, they cheap, he said. They cheap. Now, look, also, I'll be, I'll, there are a couple points on donating. A couple points on donating. First of all, it's not required. I don't require you to donate. If you come here and you ain't got no money and you say, Brother Dang, I need some help. Guess what? Guess who's going to help you that day? You're on that hype weed tonight. I'm not on it yet. Look, Susanna, this is the first bowl. I haven't smoked it yet today. I had some low energy starting off. Black Sheep like kind of corrected that. And then everybody followed in and then just it, and I, I picked up. I, 
picked up. I got lifted up already, and then I'm about to smoke this. Okay, so about donations. Even if you can't afford to donate nothing, you can still book a sesh for meditation, uh, for intuitive guidance and advice. We can do it over Skype. You know, we can do it over Facebook video. This is the most jubilant I've ever seen you. Wow, dude. Wow, I must have been getting gang stalked by the time, like, right when you joined up around here. I must have been getting gang stalked. Because usually I have a, a good attitude in life. Um, but a lot of peripheral noise can distract me and kind of even get me down, even get me depressed. That does happen. Hurry up and lie, he said. Okay, but the other point I wanted to make, if you got money or not, I'll still help you out. But if you got money to donate, definitely book a session. What are you waiting for? Okay, it says for the healing of the nations, the end of every curse. We're putting the smoke up in the air for this purpose, so there's no question. There's no question about it. A little bit of hash on the bowl. A little bit of hash on the bowl, you guys. Okay, so Susanna. Woogie. Look, you guys. Woog's been here for a bit. You, Woog has seen me through some shit. Woog's seen me since the get, y'all. Since the get. Since Brother Dank got up on here getting it. It's gotta be two years by now. Okay? Woog's been here since the get. But Susanna... I want to know how I can help you, Susanna. So I see you play guitar. That's cool. That's cool. Where are you at on your spiritual path? And how did you find Brother Dank? Woogs has been here from the get. I want to check it out. Woogs is in Houston, is that right? I forget. I forget where all my little people are. I was playing music. Good, good. You know, I have a tip jar for that. Hey, Bada B, best of brother day. No, was I was I playing good that day? I was probably like, you in Louisiana? Shut up, Woogs. I'm from Louisiana. Why we didn't get into that? You in that 504? Hold on a second. Wait, hold on, Black Sheep. Black, black Sheep, don't go nowhere. Why are you confused, bro? God damn it. Okay, Woogs is in Louisiana. I didn't, oh, I didn't fully realize that. You know, on Thursday in Louisiana, we're calling for Legalized Louisiana Statewide Rally. Across the officialdom. Hold on, no, no, this ain't really hard selling, babe. This is just putting it out there because if I don't, you won't know. Bro, did you know? Did you know Brother Dank is legalized Louisiana since 2010? Did you know that? Did you know that all the changes in weed law in Louisiana are due in large part to fucking me, dude? And they're still fucking being slow. Two two five. What's that? Baton Rouge. They still too slow with it. Look, on Thursday we call them for seeds to happy humanity, the whole shebang. So you need to contact all your people in 225 and let them know. Brother Dank said, I said, Jesus said, this is what's up. My neighborhood said this, yo. For real, Woogs, man, we need to be working a little bit more closely together on this because because I know what's going on and I know how to make shit happen. And I've been committed to Louisiana for some time. So look, if you want to blow, if you want to blow free in Louisiana for you and your family, bro, let's talk. Let's talk. Anyway, Susanna, I'm not selling too hard. Look, this is what I do. You got kicked in 225. What you mean you got kicked? What you mean? You got you got popped in 225? Here's the deal, homegirl. Brother Dank come out here as a Christian minister, playing guitar, spreading the word, healing people, providing services for free. And I got migraines occasionally. You got kicked out the scope. Okay, I saw you 225. Look, bruh. Get at me about 225. Don't you know there's an event coming up on Thursday? Haven't you seen my work on YouTube? So go follow Brother Dank on YouTube. There's a, a playlist. Whoops. There's a playlist called Dank Fronts Legalized Louisiana on Brother Dank's YouTube channel. You know, to show you some of the work I've done for you, bro, in your state, in my state. It's all been documented. The officialdom has been notified. They are not to be given any excuse. There's no more excuse in Louisiana, bruh. Everybody got a fucking story to tell about it other than the facts. Look, you got to complain, complain into the Petri dish, bruh, because we point out that science. You understand? Why don't you, why don't you explain to the, the uh, fucking... It keeps freezing on you. That's terrible. That's terrible. Susanna, are you having similar problems? Are you having similar problems with this broadcast? She said, no, I'm hearting it. No freezing. I got a clear line. Sound crystal clear. 
You know where crystal clear comes from? The Bible. You know where all our law comes from? The Bible. You know who Almighty Father is in most state and federal constitutions? The guy in the Bible. You know what the Bible says about it? Jesus is weed, literally. What's up, Taylor? Long time no chill, Jen Taylor. Jen Taylor, wait a second. Are you the are you the catfishing Jen Taylor? Or is that Jessica? Or is that there's some little catfish dude who uses a uh, voice mapping and pretends he's a girl. What's up, Taylor? Wait, are you in uh, Vancouver, Taylor? Are you in Vancouver? There's something about you that I remember that I'm not quite remembering. Where are you at? Okay, you're not a catfish. That's good. I had a catfish come through yesterday. Talking about, let's go private. My name's Jessica. No cow. Okay. You keep missing what you said. Woogs, I said, I think I said, get with your boy about legalized Louisiana and check my YouTubes. Check, check my, my YouTubes. Check my YouTubes. Because there's a channel on my YouTubes called Dank Fronts Legalized Louisiana. Check that playlist. There's about 10 videos from the last six years that show what we've been up to. Check it out, dude. And check in Facebook.com backslash Legalized Louisiana. Dude, if you want to support what you see on YouTube, PayPal.me backslash Brother Dank. If you want to support the Legalized Louisiana network that I've administered as a non-monetary uh, unincorporated grassroots lobby. If you want to support that, that non-monetary effort that autonomous individuals like myself have worked with, if you want to support an autonomous individual who created that whole fucking victory scenario, paypal.me backslash brother day. Okay. Jennifer is here, you guys. Let's welcome Jennifer and let's welcome each one. I'm thankful now to finally know that Woogs is from my home state and uh, he's gonna he's gonna uh, make two two five a free country, just like nature intended, just according to the wisdom of creation. Okay, let's give thanks for that. Let's give thanks for for Woogie articulating his vision, sharing his vision with the whole community, and let's also envision with Woogs the whole community. I'm talking about neighborhood for neighborhood, right? Dropping seeds in the ground, bringing up canopies. Having that shit cooked down by alchemists like your boy Woogs and passed out for free in the community. It's called a free medicine model. Fucking our hard work and donations will support a free medicine model that's going to increase health and justice. Incalculably, incalculably increase health and justice. I mean, I'm talking about no more will there be. You see all the hearts here for the healing, the complete healing of the nations and the end of every curse. Now... I should get into that for Taylor, for Taylor and Susanna, because T T Johnson already knows Jesus is weed. Hashtag Jesus is weed. That's right, Jesus is weed and energy medicine. You guys, let me tell you why your vision is important. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm asked to share this broadcast because this is important. Taylor, Taylor and Susanna. Susanna, tell me where you are too. I don't know where you're at. Not that it matters, but I'm just curious. You guys, this is important. Heart me if you're with me. Taylor, Susanna, someone, share this broadcast if you're with me right now. Okay, Taylor's with me. Woogs is with me. And I, I get, Sus and you're here, too. Good. I like you, Susanna. Where are you from? Okay. Jesus is weed, right? We got into that. The Christos. Literally, it means the anointing oil. I just saw a message flash. North Carolina. Cool, cool. North Carolina, what's up? Some of my favorite bands are from Chapel Hill. Ben, ben Folds Five. They're from Chapel Hill. They're a good band. Um. Anyway, you guys stop me if you don't know already everything about Jesus' weed, the Christos, the anointing oil, Moses, the alchemist, and the message to the Judaic priesthood that Yeshua the Christos testimony reveals which is the healing of the nations, the end of every curse, unleashed right now, and you're hearing it right now. Do you hear me right now? It's victory. Do you hear me right now? It's victory. Okay, so Yeshua is the Christos. The chrism has weed in it. Moses was given the chrism by the Almighty Father as an alchemist in Exodus 30, and it was said, Moses, you're my alchemist, bro. Here's some marijuana for the people. It's called the anointing oil. Okay? Jesus' name means anointing. 
are there any questions so far? Because we're going to get into the manifesting technologies, the visionary technologies that underlie the word, you know, that, that are the form and the function of the word, all right? You guys know about form and content? Okay, let me tell you why the word looks like that, because it contains all victory. I don't know if y'all are ready. I don't know if y'all are ready for this, man. I don't know if y'all are ready. Have you guys Googled the effects of laying of hands on human, trans on human transplanted breast cancer cells in mice? Headed by William Bingston in the Journal of Scientific Exploration, year 2000. Have you guys looked into this scientific research article? Are you guys familiar with what this entails? Are you guys familiar with its biblical uh, implications? The effects. What's up, Jeff Bird? Me and Jeff Bird are going to make a classic album or two or five here soon. Jeff Bird, what I'm going to do, dude, I'm going to get on some tea, some honey tea. You know, I'm going to get my vocals right. I'm going to quit the cigarettes for a while, dude. I'm going to learn some guitar chords. And we are going to lay it down. Susanna might want to come too, man. Susanna's in North Carolina. And she was, she was, uh, personally, she was personally trained by Ben Foltz and The Five which is the other th two guys in the band, in North Carolina. She's coming. She's coming to record. Quit the cigarettes. I know, huh? I know. Okay, anyway, I was continuing to be thankful. I'm also thankful. Laying of hands on breast cancer cells in my... Okay, laying of hands on breasts. Right, you, you picked up on that, on that part. He heard that part. Okay, what it actually is is laying of hands on mice who have transplanted human breast cancer cells in them growing tumors. That's actually what the study did. You're learning guitar and how to sing? Nice, dude. Look, I'll give guitar lessons, dude. PayPal.me backslash brother dang. I'll give you guitar lessons. I've taught a few people how to play the guitar from nothing. And they can play the guitar now. They can play the guitar. They know many chords, and they can pick the strings. Okay. they Honestly, we all can do it all, you guys. I... I could probably be an Olympic fucking runner at fucking 45 if I wanted to, and I took enough fucking drugs and trained real hard. You guys, we're programmable to do just about anything, you know? That's why neurolinguistic programming is important. That's backslash brother, brother dank, one word, complete word brother, complete word dank. PayPal.me backslash brother dank, no dots, no dashes, no underscores, no spaces, or special characters. Anyway, you guys, neuro-linguistic programming is a thing in science that works, okay? It also is a thing that manifests our entire reality, you guys. On the quantum level, this is real. On the quantum level. I'm talking about quantum entanglement and metaphysical manifestation and material reality. This is what I'm talking about, you guys. Okay, so whenever we run around in the death cult... And we curse ourselves all day long and there's confusion and there's lies and everybody's getting over on the other. And that's just the way the world works. Okay, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. The world's been cursing itself. Why? Why? I'll tell you fucking why, you guys. Because ignorance is an evil. Whenever there's evil, there allows room for evil. Whenever your heart is not totally in righteousness, there's room for evil there, you guys. And we are born into an evil world. That's just the evil world and system and principalities and high places. The spiritual struggle that we are in right now. We are born into the struggle in the world. It's kind of like the original sins. It's the natural state of the world. So the reason we're in this state, you guys, according to the science that I'm looking at, is because we will it to be so. We say it is so. And we create that world, you guys. That's why, in order for the elite to have control... No one has control. In order for the elite to feel like they have some sort of control, in, or in, the selfish, in the selfish desire to create heaven on earth in one's own way and not in the image of Christ, not in the, the image of the Father, not according to the wisdom of nature, whenever you get unnatural about the shit, that's when people say, oh, um, let me wield power with death. Okay, so where war comes in. This is where secrets come in. This is where lies come in, where like people don't even know about weed medicine, okay? Because your thoughts become reality. And someone has looked at this scenario. They've considered the magical concepts, and a group of people came up with a magical system that basically is enslaving a lot of the world, okay? But it is a linguistic 
system. It is a linguistic technology, you guys. And what I mean by that is a language technology, okay? So you would have no concept of the fucking ills of the world if the ills of the world were not articulated to you and handed to you and shown to you, okay? Someone wanted to show you the beauty in the world, you would experience the beauty in the world. So wouldn't you say there seems to be a tendency against the natural inclination of humanity to be all right, at least be all right and not shitty, huh? What's, why is the world so shitty sometimes for many? Why is that? Is there any good reason? No, but there's some, there's a, there's some mysterious re reasons. There's some, there's some, uh, there's some mysterious reasons why, you guys. Look at the magical art systems. Look at, no, it's not getting shittier, though, you guys. The media shows you all this. The institutions give you all this, which is lies. The institutions purposefully give you lies. They purposely give you half the fucking shit you actually need to know. They purposefully deny you your life. They wield death, many of these institutions. Okay? Now, those institutions are not getting any better, but they're not getting any worse. It's the same fucking dead bullshit that's been dead for fucking thousands of years, okay? But what is happening also, meanwhile, like not in the world, but... But, um... Not, not, not in the world, but above the world here where we are. What is also going on is heaven on earth. Do you understand? What is also going on is the perfect state of nature, which is awesome. Why are there increased mass shootings? I will tell you why. I will tell you fucking why. There's a big fucking reason why. First of all, we're indoctrinated to accept it. So people think that's an option. Crazy people even think that's an option. Furthermore, people, I don't trust any fucking active shooter scenario. I don't trust anybody to be in their right mind because I have seen the evidence of false flag operations, fake fucking news, and mind control. Mind control, okay? So we have all the technology we would need to take someone who's a normal person and mind control them without their even knowing it to go and shoot up a fucking mall. We have that technology if we want to apply that technology. We could also apply that technology to bring in the love singularity. Same technology. But you guys, voice to skull, mind reading, synthetic telepathy, to where you can neuro-linguistically program motherfuckers to do whatever you want. It's in advertising. It's in marketing, you guys. It's also just a... It's a psyop. There's war applications for this, you guys. And don't think the fucking commerce system isn't a psyop to begin with. Don't think all of fucking... Traditional society structures aren't a fucking psyop before they invented psyops as part of the U.S. Army or whatever. Fucking psyops have been going on. Okay, so it's a, what it is is a PR struggle. My thoughts on the war, you guys, is the war is fucking over as soon as we know it's fucking over. As soon as everyone agrees it's fucking over. As soon as everyone stops promoting the war. As soon as we stop dumping money into the war. As soon as everyone agrees, everyone chooses to live fucking life in peace. This is what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, the only answer to war um, is, is not in any middle ground. You know, there's no answer to war in a state of less war. There's no answer to war if we don't fully accept the peaceful uh, world uh, in nature that we've been given freely, you guys. Okay, so I guess I'm not explaining it right. Let me tell you what all this fucking, why all this makes any type of sense. Why war is a language and why there are curses in the world today and why the promise is a world without curses. I can tell you, okay, I know you believe we can't wish it all away, but what if, and, and thank your husband for his service, please do. I, honestly, there's, there's domestic war going on. There's people out here in the domestic security apparatus, like myself, who just wants to bring weed to people, who gets caught up in the war machine, sister. The war machine. I'm talking about war in America, dude. And, like, it's a pretty bloodless war, but it's it still intends murder, you know? Like, like Yeshua said, if you, if you sleep with, if you want to sleep with a woman who's not your husband, you already committed adultery. If you hate someone, you're already a murderer, okay? So, it's a more of a psyop war that goes on on the domestic scenes. A lot more psyops, but you see this in the news. Okay, don't don't think you're not part of the fucking psyop receiving the fucking violence of this. Don't think you're escaping it right now, just because you're not deployed. Okay, all Americans get the fucking gun. Okay, 
But here's why this world is possible. Because if, if you and your husband know this, and more people know this, that it is possible, then it's totally going to happen. There's no stopping it. Do you see? Like, there's so much money and energy invested into the war machine, knowingly, unknowingly. Dude, and there's so much fear and evil wrapped up in the war machine. Honestly, secrets, okay? All this security to where it bleeds out into the, just the domestic scene and we're dealing with war everywhere in the, for the sake of peace. Okay, so much confusion and so much energy wasted. If let me, tell, let me tell you now, this is the point I was trying to make. Let me reveal to you the power of your intention. Can we do this? Who's ready? Pardon me if you're ready. It's called The Effects of Laying of Hands on Transplanted Human Breast Cancer Cells in Mice from the Journal of Scientific Exploration, year 2000. You can Google this. You can Google this. What they did was shoot up mice with cancer. And they tested their cancer drug on the mice, right? So if you have, like, I was injured by a child strapped with a bomb that believed it was for God. Oh, my God, Susanna. So listen. He was injured by a child. Okay. So listen. There are technologies in America that will... And, and, and people in the government who will um, facilitate that sort of thing. They encourage that sort of thing. Tell me how we don't need war again. We don't need that shit. Did your, did your husband need to experience that? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Here's why. Here's why. Here's what you need to understand, Susanna. This is powerful. Was this a, was this a child who did this? Was this a child? Was this a fucking nine-year-old child? Was this a child? Okay, so this child didn't make no fucking decision on his own to do this. This is an evil. This is an evil. And you gotta look at the technology that led this child to do this. He was indoctrinated, he was mind controlled to do this. Okay? The natural inclination of people who are in total MK Ultra mind control. I mean, from the day they're born, they have a dick in their mouth. Trauma based mind control. The natural inclination is by the time they hit. Of course he believed it was for Allah. But let me tell you the rest of the story. Anyone who is, they are told to do this. Okay, people who are under, do you know what MK Ultra mind control is? People who are in the MK Ultra mind control program from birth naturally, spontaneously break out of it when they're about 26, 28. That's why Britney Spears is going to shave her hair off. That's why everybody freaks out. They're 28. They break program. It is not a natural state. Allah, Allah, murder, murder. It's not a natural state. It is an unnatural state. Okay? People who are under mind control have a natural re resistance to it and we break out of it. Our bodies reject that shit. We reject it. We break the program, okay? Naturally, this is our inclination, okay? So if our natural inclination is to do that, and it takes so much emotional, physical, spiritual investment in order to make somebody be a Unabomber, what I'm saying is, if we took all of those human resources and directed them towards a different type of education that's not mind control, it's not trauma-based mind control, it's just loving, edifying, uh, enhancing, real sharing education that helps people. If we did that instead of indoctrinating people in the war machine, across the world, okay? If America decided that in order to fight the world, it's going to indoctrinate the world in peace, it would take a fraction of 1% of the fucking budget to do so. I promise you this. It doesn't take money. Okay, here's why I know this is a fact. Okay, because people break out of MK Ultra. We know what we know what it involves to get people under mind control. It's very expensive. So let's look at one solution that is worth looking at. The effects of laying of hands on transplanted human breast cancer cells and mice. Would you agree? Would you agree that cancer is an illness like, like, uh, like 
jihad is an illness. It's like a mental illness, right? Would you agree that that's the case? So what we're dealing with is evils. So what you're going to need to apply is medicine. What you're going to need to apply to the bomb droppers is medicine. Information. So in this scientific article, what they do is look at the manifesting, manifesting medicines, which is laying of hands, right? Spiritual medicine, energetic medicine. What they did was, oh, and let me welcome uh, Vince. Hey, Vince. So what they did, and this is why the war is over, you guys. This is why word is victor. This is why if you call yourself a Christian, you need to stick to the script and know that there's no more curse in the world. The, the, the technique itself was thinking about healthy mice. The technique itself, and this is on a list of, of 20 or so images that one will cycle through. Uh, the actual technique, meditation is what's needed. Correct prayer is what's needed. Okay? So listen, the actual technique is imagining the result that you want. So in the Christian world, it's like the great city where there's no curse. Okay? It's a return to nature in the Christian sense. Um, if you have a business, it's uh, you, and you build up these images, right? You build up several images. If you if you need a new car, this is just the the, the the technique itself. If you need a new car, you think about the car, you drive around in the car, you smell the leather, you invest in that image. And this girl left. God damn it! You invest in that image. If you want your business to be cool, it's like high fives across the uh, boardroom, and there's money everywhere. Okay. It's the envision. You don't get involved in the details. You just get involved in the result. Okay? And this is just standard fucking... Standard metaphysics, right? So, but anyone can be taught how to do this in a particular disciplined fashion. And you build up like 10 or 20 images. One of them on the list in this study was happy, healthy mice. Because they were going to test it on mice with cancer. They were going to test it against cancer. So the protocol calls for people imagining happy, healthy mice. And then you cycle through these images, right? Your 20 images, it's like car, house, business, mice, dancing, whatever your images are. And you go faster and faster with those, with those cycles. And then you start to experience a flow state. What's up, Whimsical by Shelley? You start to experience a flow state. When you enter the flow state, then you amplify your list of intentions with love. And that's the technique, okay? Hey, hey, I'm explaining how war is over and, and uh, life is good. So, <clears throat> if enough people, because this might be dose-dependent like a medicine, they're testing, they're testing uh, hands-on healing and intentional healing on mice with cancer in this study, whimsical. So, what, do you th what, what potential effects do you think that, that correctly praying against cancer will have in this laboratory study, you guys? Let's get some let's get some uh, perspectives. What do you think happened when people started thinking about healthy mice in this laboratory study? What happened? Did their cancer like continue to march on? What did it slow their cancer? This is a, a, a cancer study. What happened, you guys? I'm just putting that out there. The question: What do you think happened in your mind? It gets better. It does get better, you guys. Here's what happened: One hundred percent of the mice, Shelley. Rejected their cancer? I would imagine any good energy help. Well, here's how much good energy help. If you do this right, which anyone can be trained how to do this, 100% of the mice rejected their cancer. They were healed for life. They tried to stick them with more cancer without thinking about them ever again. They just tried to give them more cancer. And it didn't take. They were healed for life. And you can do this from a distance. You don't have to hold your hand over the cage. Uh, you can think about... You can think about mice in Florida, and they all reject their cancer, and you're in California. And this is in the experimental box. The control box is just supposed you shoot them up with cancer, you forget about them. They're just supposed to die, right? The control of the study. So what does cancer do to you? Let's find out what cancer does. Let's shoot them up with cancer. Oh, 28 to 32 days, they're all fucking dead. That's what the control box is supposed to do. But in this study, you guys, in this study, the control box spontaneously received the healing like it's contagious, like the disease is, you guys. Like it's contagious. This is why Yeshua could walk into a town and just heal the whole town. 
or he couldn't heal nobody in his hometown because you can be resistant to the healing. This is what it means to be the walking dead. Okay, so bringing this all around, and homegirl left. Homegirl whose husband was wounded by a jihadist in the war has left us, but I was trying to tell her why war is not necessary. Because if you have an image in your mind of war and you're investing into that, then that's what's going to manifest. But if you invest your energies into a peaceful world, that will manifest. This is what the science says. So right now it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game where we're going to hit a tipping point called the love singularity. And um, once everyone finds out and starts applying the medicine, that is what's going to occur. And this is what the Bible says. If you look at the, the mission of the apostles, the acts of the apostles, they did three things. They anointed with oil, which has weed in it. They healed in his name, hands on, like we just talked about. And what's the other thing he did? They taught the people. They taught the people about these things. They said, look, you can use these medicines. You can use your images and make a beautiful world. And they taught everyone how to do it. The end, you guys. The end. So you may support this ministry. PayPal.me backslash Brother Dank. You can book a session. Dankministries at gmail.com. Please email me. Follow me on your preferred platform. Twitter, Facebooks, Instagrams, BrotherDank.com. Uh, what's Tumblr? Snapchat. Isn't that amazing, Shelly? The research is called The Effects of Laying of Hands on Transplanting Human Breast Cancer Cells in Mice, Journal of Scientific Exploration, Year 2000. Additionally, Jesus is weak. Sue Bennett, 1937 or so. Um, Chris Bennett on YouTube. He's a Canadian historian. And check the script, you guys. It is a, the word is victory. The word is victory. It's a great story. It's a very powerful story. It's a mythos, even. It's a mythos to be applied now. Nothing else has really come up that's any better. That's why was, there's a lot of energy invested into, into anti-Christianity. There's a lot of energy invested into that, right? Isn't all of Christianity merely a whitewashed version of the truth of the matter? And how much energy did it take to do all that for centuries to try to whitewash everything? And then the fucking lie just falls on its face immediately. You know what I'm saying? A lie does not fucking lie to you guys. That's the good news. The good news is that the war is over, you guys. And the good news is that we actually are doing it. I have a friend who teaches Ganji Yoga who says the same. Nice, nice. And where are you located, Miss uh, Miss Shelley? Where are you located? Probably in California. You have to have your medical card to do Ganja Yoga. Portland? Stop it. I'm in Portland. Who does Ganja Yoga in Portland? Um, and let's do it. And I'm in Portland. Let's hang out. I'm bored. I'm bored right now. I'm bored right now. I was like even depressed today. I was like, man, I'm bored. She's in Denver. Okay, but you're in Portland. Let's kick it. Um, let's kick it. Is it still wet out? It's still kind of wet. What time is it? 624? Damn, it's late. Well, let's kick it soon. Let's kick it soon. Um, no, but it's, uh, listen, though, Shelly, honestly, um, it's good to meet you. You came to the right scope. Like, this is a very important area of Periscope. You'll follow me for sure. Also, um, you're going to want to hang out. You're going to want to hang out. Nothing weird, Shelly, nothing weird. I just don't really know anyone in town, although I've been here for a few years. Um, because mostly the only people I know are, are gang stalkers. That's really the closest, most intimates that I've had. Um... So I don't really know anyone in town, and I'm looking to smoke weed and chill out. That's all. I'm looking to share the vision with you, with the city of Portland, the great city of Portland. Let me tell you about Portland, Shelley. Are you from Portland? Are you from Portland? No, Wyoming. Okay. Here's the deal with Portland. You're not from Portland? Everybody from Portland. No, nobody's from Portland. Here's the deal. Portland's a great city. It's got some bad juju. It's got some bad energy sometimes. And it's like sort of like a front. But everybody's just prone to talk shit or prone to diss that. Why, you guys? Because y'all not from here because we're ruining their party. I get all that. But honestly, I'm not. Like, where I'm from, we embrace people who, who come. 
you know. We don't feel like they're stepping on us. Not at all. We embrace the newcomers. Anyway, for a while, you just did a game show on Periscope. Nice. I missed it, Wugs. I missed it. I missed it. Good people, though, if you find them. Yeah, so there are good people here. That's what I'm saying. So here's what I'm saying. For a while, though, that, that was intensified. It was fun. Nice. For a while, it was kind of intensified. Because I, I don't know if you know about gangs talking, but it's a thing in Portland. It's like a, a, a federal training ground. And it involves a, a few different technologies, actually, and a few different coordinated strategies. But ultimately, I was getting, it was hot. It was hot for me here with all that shit. And whenever, whenever you get some intense gang stalking, it's very negative. It's very negative, okay? So for a while, I was walking around. I was like, damn, is everybody in Portland just a complete disgusting asshole? Because, like, that's all I really got all day long because of the fucking program. Like, all I just got was straight negativity all day. I just couldn't believe it. It seemed unreal. So my experience with Portland has been slightly tainted under that light. But I know Portland's a great city. I know Portland's a great city. We're just waiting to accept Christ, even. They didn't even know it. They thought it was a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> They're all ready to accept Christ. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? They thought they weren't ready. They thought it was like, whatever with that bullshit. But they're ready. You know what Portland can deal with is the truth. Also, Portland got a little grime on it, man. I heard that there was some shit that happened with, uh... Like, some bar owner became the mayor at some time, and then it was just grimed out. What happened with that? Killingsworth? Was that the guy? I don't remember. I don't remember the story. But then there's all this... And then there's all this racial shit. Jesus Christ, Portland. Step into the love singularity today, right now, man. Fuck. Then there's all this fucking other stuff. Everybody's, like, trying to do these things to get money. Portland, fuck, dude. Make an honest life for yourself. Jesus. Let's do it. This is a great city. I'm ready. Okay. Anything else, you guys? Anything else? Shall I say, ah, I don't want to hang out. We ain't gonna hang out. Let's hang out, man. I'm chilling. I'm chilling hard. Let's do drugs. Let's hang out and do drugs and go to a show. Let's go to a show. Let's go to the bar. Let's go to the bar. Portland is alcoholic, yo. Portland's alcoholic as fuck. But there are some decent drugs here. But, um, y'all need to come out with them. Y'all need to come out with them. Oh, wait, I did have a story. Peace, Wilkes. I did have a story about the Portland police. The Portland police, craft beer and good wine. Yeah, but where's all the rest of the drugs? Why y'all holding out? I know they're around. But then they begin re rocking all this. Come on. What year is it? What year is it, Portland? Jesus is weed and all the drugs already. But I have a story about Portland cops. My buddy, uh, my buddy had a police encounter recently. And he just has PTSD. And he wasn't breaking any laws. And the cops came out and they was like, What's the deal here, man? He was like, You know, I just got PTSD and motherfuckers are out here talking shit. And somebody called the cops, but I didn't do nothing wrong. They said, okay, man, okay. Well, and the cops were really cool with them. Like, they didn't try to, like, push no issue or whatever. They was like, you know what, there's this dude, Timmy. And Timmy would, this was before mer medical marijuana. This is like, in the 90s and stuff. Timmy would walk around Portland just pissed off, screaming in a rage, man. Timmy had PTSD from the war. And just every day, that was Timmy's thing, man. He walked down the street just raging and ranting and raving. And then one day, Timmy just chilled out, man. Timmy just chilled out. This was before medical marijuana. This is what the cops were saying. And they, they, they stopped Timmy one day. They saw him just walking down the street. He's like, yo, Timmy, what's up, man? You're doing well, right? You're doing good. He's like, I'm on that weed, man. He's like, well, look. And this was like in the early 90s. He's like, look, man. If that's what you need is a little marijuana and it's, it chills you out, then good. So I want y'all to know, Portland police were... Some of some of the the forefathers of compassionate medical marijuana use in Portland. I want y'all to know that because Portland is a great city. Okay. 
Because Portland police are your friends. Always remember Timmy. Always remember Timmy. If there's drugs involved with the Portland police, always remember Timmy and bring him up. Bring him up, because that's truth. That's truth, you guys. Never forget Timmy in the Portland Police Department. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'll put this on YouTube now. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow Brother Dane across your preferred platform. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, BrotherDink.com. PayPal.me backslash Brother Dink. Please support this ministry. We're coming with other stuff, you guys. We're going to build a Dankuary. I mean, it, it, we've got all sorts of things in the works for the healing of the nations, the end of every curse. Um, and uh, book a sesh. Do book a sesh. Uh, we'll do intuitive readings, uh, tarot, or whatever's required. I never know what's going to happen in the session until we get there and do it. Intuitive drawings. I might have to draw something. I might be inspired to do that. Um, and it's always very helpful. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, donations are gratefully accepted, you guys. But if you need a space that is chill and you need a perspective that is honest, um, that's, that's what we can do together. We can be we can be real, and uh, it's usually very productive. Uh, and you can get at me at dankministries at gmail dot com. Dankministries at gmail dot com. Or PayPal at me backslash brother dank. I always love to see uh, support. Who doesn't, right? Because it's going to help us do great things. All right. And uh, thank you to Whimsical and Wokes for stopping by. Everyone who stopped by this broadcast is blessed. And uh, we'll probably be up again soon. I just want to end it because it's getting out there. Be long. We want to put it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Oh, uh, Miss Aglaveria, go, I'm gonna, I'm following you already, but I'm about to restart and put this on YouTube. So I'll be right back. Sometimes it's hard to stop the broadcast on my LGG4. Hashtag LGG4. Hashtag Periscope.